To complete the external faces of the cylinder block, I've just got the face that goes against the frames for each block to be machined. And had I thought a bit further ahead when I machined the mandrel for the last operation, I could have reused it for this. But I didn't and therefore I can't, so I made a new one. With this mandrel I've turned a 26mm diameter shoulder at the far end and at this end of the mandrel I've drilled and tapped an M6 hole in the centre. The former is to allow me to accurately and securely hold the mandrel in the machine vice via a square collet chuck, as we can see here, and the latter is to enable me to clamp the cylinder onto the mandrel. In this setup now, the vice and therefore the mandrel are aligned to the x-axis. I've got a dial gauge against the top of the mandrel and this I'm using to check that it's positioned horizontally. Before I mount the cylinder, I touch off with my fly cutter and reset the z-axis on my DRO. As a side note, when I machined this mandrel, I used a high-speed steel tool piece rather than a carbide one, and as expected, it did give me a better finish, but it's still bloody awful. The reason why I'm clamping the cylinder onto the mandrel for this operation, when I didn't previously, is that this time around the cutting forces will not be pushing the block up against the taper on the mandrel, so therefore a clamp is needed to stop it from being pushed off the mandrel by the fly cutter. To ensure that the top face of the cylinder block is square with the mill table, I use an angle plate. Given the size of the mandrel and the lightness of the operations that are about to follow, it's a bit OTT, but I do put a stop underneath the cylinder block to prevent any downward deflection. As with many machining operations, the actual time involved with the cutting is significantly less than the time taken to set everything up. For this face I had to take off round about 3mm, which I did with repeated cuts round about 0.4mm deep, until my finishing cut, which is round about 0.1mm. Don does advise that the mounting holes that need to be drilled and tapped on this face are spotted through from the frames, but as I drilled the holes in the frames using my DRO, I'm actually quite confident that I don't need to do that. However, it would be a foolish man to dive straight into drilling all those holes without first checking. So I mark out the centres for the bolt holes that sit across the centre of the cylinder block, and the front to back centre lines for the other two rows. This allows me to hold the cylinder block in position and do a visual check from the other side of the frames. With the cylinder block back in the mandrel, I use the edge finder to find the top and the front to back centre. With those established, I use the DRO to position the quill over the centre of the two central mounting bolt holes and drill accordingly. And it's pleasing to see that the DRO aligns perfectly with the marked lines. Both holes are then tapped at 5BA, first with a taper and secondly with a plug to try and get right down to the bottom. They're only 4.75mm deep. Because I'm a cautious man, I now fit the cylinder block in place using those two tapped holes and again do a visual check on the others. As it all looks good, I crack on and drill and tap the remaining holes on this face. Because the front mounting bolts pass through both the frames and the front stretcher, I decide to use some studs which I've cut from some 5BA threaded rod. I really don't know how you guys out there make 3.5 inch gauge locos. It was a real struggle getting these bolts in from the inside and you can see that I can actually get the front bolt in due to its proximity to the frame stretcher. And here we can see the nuts that I fitted onto the studs. As usual, I'll finish off with a couple of pictures of my work and say thanks for watching.